what this is. <clears throat> All right, this is Let Bigelow. Uh, I doubt no relation to Bam Bam Bigelow. I doubt it. See, he's tired of people talking bad about the Ultimate Warrior. That's right. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I think I've seen this dude a couple times before, but it was a long time ago. And he um probably is, I don't know if he's with the current stuff, but he's probably a wrestling fan, old school wrestling fan. Like, what's the dude that did the um the documentary on uh, Vlad, um, the super fan dude? <clears throat> Let's see what he's talking about. I'm sitting at a McDonald's parking lot. I'm in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and this nerd working at McDonald's here, He's pressure washing the leaves off of the parking lot and like into the brush, the center. Of the, you know, I should jump out of my van right now and take that pressure washer from him and pressure wash his face just to see if his lips come off. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I was sitting in my van and I was editing uh, videos and I visited the Ultimate Warrior's grave about uh, a week ago and. Wow. Uh, I, I just did, you know, a quick spiel on him and uh, just really talk about as a kid, me watching wrestling uh, and me loving Ultimate Warrior. And personally, uh, my top five favorite wrestlers of all time, and when I base this on just my personal experience and my uh, excitement for seeing them on TV, uh, I didn't have cable when I was a kid because, uh, you know, well, number one, we were poor and then we got... Oh, shit, ads. Here we go. The bigger the screen, the better. <laughs> this is Ridley's arena. Run in the carrots! And then we got it when I was, like, nine, and then we moved to a building that we couldn't get it because it was so old. It wasn't wired to be able to even get cable. So I missed a lot of um, wrestling as, as a kid growing up in Hollywood. So oftentimes I would, you know, either have to go watch the pay-per-views at my friend's house uh, whenever I could or what have you. So my top five are uh, in no particular order because I really can't choose. Um, I would probably say Hulk Hogan is my number one, right? I don't know. But I, uh, my five are Hulk Hogan, Ravishing Rick Rude, Ultimate Warrior, The Great Muda, and The Blue Blazer. And No Macho Man? <coughs> you know, just oh. by me, you know, when I'm editing video, sometimes I'll play a video of whatever YouTuber just to, as white noise. Uh, don't worry, I don't listen to anybody. Yeah, Rick Rude probably um next to Triple H, the greatest heels. Cause Trip, I don't remember Rick Rude being the, uh, being the good guy. Um, Triple H was a good guy, but it, it didn't look right. It's it's not it wasn't fooling nobody. It was like the bulldog uh, being the bad guy. Come on now, or Sting being the bad. It's just, it's just certain stuff just did. Certain stuff just didn't look right, you know. Okay, better yet, Flair being the good guy. That's, that's it. As much help as that man had back in the day. If, again, if Mr. Cole was here, uh, yeah, I can see him now <laughs> raising hell. He's like, that motherfucker ain't no damn good guy. Fuck you. I can hear, I can hear him raising hell now. Body that you guys think I might listen to. Uh, I don't listen to those nerds. And, uh, a great movie, yeah. I, re another I remember, like, over the, you know, five years, a lot of people shitting on the Ultimate Warrior. You know, people just talking, oh, he sucked, I hated wrestling with him, he was an asshole, he was a jerk, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Let me tell you, Gaffkins. Uh all you wrestling podcast weirdos out there, let me tell you. Wrestling, as I knew it, was for kids. It wasn't for you fucking future school shooters, okay? It wasn't for you grown-ass 35-year-old man babies living in the back of your mom's trailer in your own trailer because you think you got your own path. Okay. Uh, I'm a reactor. I'm in my own damn place. None of that, um, just saying. I'm agreeing with some of this stuff, but, uh, None of that, uh, what do they like to say, uh, living in your mother's basement, living in the basement, playing, um, playing Call of Duty. It's in my own, in my own place. Yeah. No, motherfucker, you don't, okay? That's not your land. 
But some I mean, of the podcasts, I mean, they cut him off again so early. But some of the po- <clears throat> some of the podcasts, yeah, I think he's talking about uh, the wrestling fan podcast. I'm only talking about the wrestlers. He's talking about the wrestling fan podcasts. Like some, some, some are good, and some of them are, um, you know, like getting back to the bashing thing. I cannot remember this guy's name. I can't remember him. This was five, six, seven years ago. The dude that was uh, bashing Bret Hart. That was surprising, but uh, I was like, what the hell? You probably got molested on, but it's not your land. Yeah, that's, that's a low blow. Come on, low blow. Anyways, uh, yeah, a big fuck you to all you guys. Uh, you know, uh, I... When I would watch The Ultimate Warrior, um, yeah, he wasn't a technical wrestler. And I knew that as a kid. Like, he wasn't doing all of the crazy moves. I said that. The Blue Blazer or the he, Great Blue he's, he's not right? Ricky Steamboat. And, uh, so you know, what? He, 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 you know, Hulk Hogan was like um, a legend, as was The Ultimate Warrior. And, yeah, uh, The Ultimate Warrior, in, in my opinion, with Hulk Hogan, uh, is really what catapulted wrestling into mainstream uh, America and, and super world. superheroes and yeah okay he the man had his flaws uh, you know maybe he could have been a prima donna at his you know the height of his career he was fucking popular and uh, he was probably one of the top two or three most uh, popular wrestlers ever now you know, I know a lot of you. Yeah, we, Hogan, Savage, say, and Warrior. Oh, no, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, no. That was Rockers. later. Dude, I stopped watching wrestling when I was like. Oh, this. Oh, I'm getting into this, and these ads are killing me. Damn. 15, 14. I... Yeah, the, uh, I don't know how old this dude is, but. um. Stone Cold and The Rock. That was late '90s. Early '90s was Hogan, Warrior, Savage, Undertaker. Cause, cause when Stone Cold and came, out, Taker was already um, what's that called? Uh, a made man. I was doing other things. I was watching Saved by the Bell in college years, and you assholes, because you're immature, you were still watching wrestling because, well, you basically, you, you guys are fucking uh, no life having slobs, most of you. Uh, I mean, you got to really think. What kind of 30-year-old man still watches wrestling? I mean, listen, God bless you because, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, I'll put on wrestling because sometimes it's funny. Sometimes the, the, the storylines that they write uh, and the jokes that they do. Well, I watch. Let me see. <sighs> when I got to my um, mid-20s, that was the Cena era. And back then, I was just I was just watching that at, like, force of habit. Like, 2000. I don't even know what year that was. Oh, eight, nine, ten, whatever year it was. Yeah, this, he's watching. Just to be, you know, because you got you because you're used to watching. And, and then, like I say, when it got to be garbage, or it got to be so-so. You wanted to get better, so hoping it would get better. You know. Uh, it was it was funny. I actually kind of started getting back into wrestling a little bit when I was older, just because The Rock was funny. I mean, they would write the, the funniest skits, so I I would check that out only because of The Rock. So if I had a top ten favorite, he did a lot of his own time, stuff back then. You know, I, I would definitely uh, throw in The Rock. Uh, I would throw in um, King Kong Bundy. Uh, I would throw in uh, let's see who else would I throw in? I don't know. I think I, I, maybe the Road Warriors or something. I don't know. But uh, you know. I had a job. I, you know, did stuff. I, I didn't really watch too much television, uh, unlike a lot of you nerds. Uh, which I love you nerds because the, the same nerds that watch a lot of television <laughs> watch a lot of my videos. So I need to keep you guys, uh, you know, close to my heart, near and dear. And, nerds. Uh, I just. Now, which nerds are we talking about here? <clears throat> you talking about uh, St- Steve Urkel nerd or a uh, comic book nerd? You know, what are we? Uh, computer nerd. What are we talking about here? You know, I, I, when I was at his grave, I, I was just remembering all of the bundle of sticks that were just bad mouthing the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, you know, when he was alive and, and talking down about him and all this and that. And uh, you know, listen. Um, oh, let me say one more time. Uh, he made a. I know I'm cutting him off several times, uh, dude. If you see this uh, video, uh, 
of Bigelow. There is um, it still should be on YouTube. You, you might you might have seen it already. Ultimate Warrior does have a shoot interview, um, it's from like 2005. After that, freaking, uh, what did that dude say? That hit job burial session they did on the poor on the poor man. Uh, no pun. Uh, they uh, they just ripped him apart, and then he made his shoot interview and ripped him apart back and told his side, which I'm glad. It's like two, maybe two hours. It was in 2005. I remember it because I had it when I had the DVD when it first came out before I moved. But it's um, it's a good shoot interview. He gets a little irritated at stuff, but uh, it's a good interview. And he talks about you know why he left and then came back and fired. And he talks about a lot of you know everything pretty much. Heads with a lot of people during his uh, Hall of Fame speech, and, and uh, it was so crazy to see him as like an older guy. And then, you know, tragically, he, he had a heart attack and he died in Arizona about, what, was the next day after he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame? And, uh, and I just wanted to get that off my chest because um, regardless of whether, you know, he, you know, he would, I only remember one time ever that he jumped, uh, that he jumped off of the top turnbuckle. Uh, you know, and again, he didn't have a lot of moves. Uh, he was just, he was more of like charisma. He was a power wrestler. And, and looks and, and, and the image, you know what I mean, versus another wrestler who might take the craft more seriously. Whatever. Uh, wrestling is for kids. Okay, so all you adult, um, you know, sissy weirdos, uh, lay off the ultimate warrior. Okay? He wasn't, he wasn't crafted for a uh, dumb 30 year old geezers <clears throat> to uh to to lust that yeah no he was more for the i mean um the people that was bashing him is more people in the business it wasn't fans fans or the fans of today wouldn't like a lot of the wrestlers of today i mean i mean of uh, back then with the exception of maybe like the taker or something like that because they say oh well, the taker is more than a gimmick you, you know you can wrestle but like i said um getting back to the warrior he didn't have to uh be the mat technician you know because I know they say, well, Bulldog, he was a big dude too, but Bulldog could wrestle. I was like, yeah, well, that, that's the Bulldog, you know? I mean, he's, he was created for kids and teenagers to look up for and to wanting to be big and strong uh, and take lots of steroids. Like, what's the word, dude? God rest your soul, sir. Yeah, so that that really pissed me off. Oh, he admitted that. He admitted he took guys uh, out there defaming the Ultimate Warrior's name, uh, go drink a bucket of AIDS. Okay. As a matter of fact, you can have my bucket right here. I'm just kidding. I don't have AIDS. Okay. Not that I know. But uh, lay off him. Uh, Ultimate Warrior is one of the uh, greatest wrestlers of all time. All right, guys. Uh, I'm out of here. Just just a quick little rant as I'm sitting in my van. And um, yeah, catch up with you guys later. Have a good one. Yeah, no, oh wait a minute. Now, if you're a concealed carrier, another thing too. I don't know if uh, if dude knows Warrior did have one comeback match. Um, I guess you call it his final match in 2008, the Lando Jordan, and, and he's got two YouTube channels. He's got this Ultimate Warrior channel, and he's got his original channel, uh, Warrior TV. And in that match, because T he when he gets in sh when he gets in shape and trains, he gets in shape. That man was like Vegeta. <laughs> In fact, he was killing himself out there. <sighs> he was he was getting in that gym rough with it. So I did a reaction to that, and he um he was tearing it up in that gym. His tank top was so soaked he had to wring it out with his bare hands. That was the roughest thing you've seen. He still had to snarl with it and everything. Now his hair's cut. His hair's cut short, but he's 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 still ripped though. He he got in some serious <clears throat> some serious shape. But I agree with uh, with dude with Bigelow. Let, let him be. And you know, defending himself. I know some people say they don't care about defending yourself. They're gonna get him. I was like, well, you get him and fuck you then. <laughs> Leave him alone. You know, he's got kids and everything back there. So let it let that man let him be. Let him be.